We arrived in Vietnam in September, September the 14th. We were fighting what was called the Viet Cong. They broke through our lines, and we had to go hand to hand with them. I was actually one of the nine out of 56 that came back after one whole year. And that's hard to forget. We had 75 killed and 115 wounded. Vietnam was hell. We had never been thanked for our service, never. Congressman Ron Paul got my medals for me and presented them to me. That was an awesome feeling. People break down and cry because they're getting the medals that they finally deserved. It takes a veteran to understand a veteran, and he is a veteran himself. Ron Paul is a veteran's best friend. He said, thank you for your service, and he shook our hand and gave us a hug. That will always be there. According to the Center for Responsive Politics, which tracks the government's information on campaign contributions, Ron Paul is by far the leading recipient of cash from current members of the military. Among those who gave more than $200, the group says, Paul brought in more than $210,000 last year. Fellow war opponent Obama is far behind, but places second with more than $94,000. John McCain and Hillary Clinton are an even more distant third and fourth. People who are for Ron Paul are very passionate because he wants to shrink government and he wants to improve military pay and he wants to ret improve retirement pay and he wants to improve services to veterans. Afghanistan, how quickly would you bring as the troops home? As quick as the ships could get there. It really says a lot that the politically aware people in the military, those that are paying attention and engaged in the political process, are supporting someone who advocates an immediate withdrawal. I got twice as much as all the other candidates put together on the Republican side, and even more than Obama got, which tells me that those troops want to come home as well because they know exactly what I'm talking about. My name is Eric Knowles. I'm an Air Force veteran. My name is Jonathan Schaefer. I spent six years in the Navy. Hello, my name is Tony Morick. I served in the Army for eight years. I'm Al Schlegel. I'm an eight-year Air Force veteran. Hi, my name is John Jones, and uh, I'm a U.S. Air Force veteran. Uh, I have a cousin who's in the Marine Corps. He spent 18 months over in Iraq, a war based on a lie. There's, a, there's great reason to have hope for uh, Ron Paul's candidacy, as he's the only representative in Congress that takes his oath to the Constitution and the rule of law seriously. You sign up for the military, and you sign the dotted line. You're there to defend America and the Constitution, and Ron Paul is the only person that's been doing that for a while now. I support Ron Paul because I believe he's the only candidate with the fortitude to actually stand by the Constitution. I took an oath to support defend the Constitution, and he is the only elected representative that actually takes his oath seriously. I think he's dead on when he talks about the Federal Reserve System. It's only because the government is able to print money to pay for the war that we're able to stay at war. Um, and that, that act of printing money makes us all poorer. Don't get involved in these wars, just bring our troops home. Somewhere in the middle of Texas, there was a large foreign military base. Say Chinese or Russian. Imagine that thousands of armed foreign troops were constantly patrolling American streets in military vehicles. Imagine they were here under the auspices of keeping us safe or promoting democracy or protecting their strategic interests. Imagine that they operated outside of U.S. law and that the Constitution did not apply to them. Imagine that every now and then they made mistakes or acted on bad information and accidentally killed or terrorized innocent Americans, including women and children, most of the time with little or no repercussions or consequences. Imagine that they set up checkpoints on our soil and routinely searched and ransacked entire neighborhoods of homes. Imagine if Americans were fearful of these foreign troops and overwhelmingly thought America would be better off without their presence. Imagine if some Americans were so angry about them being in Texas that they actually joined together to fight them off in defense of our soil and sovereignty because leadership in government refused or were unable to do so. 
imagined that those Americans were labeled terrorists or insurgents for their defensive actions and routinely killed or captured or tortured by the foreign troops on our land. Imagine that the occupier's attitude was that if they just killed enough Americans, the resistance would stop. But instead, for every American killed, ten more would take up arms against them, resulting in perpetual bloodshed. Imagine if most of the citizens of the foreign land also wanted these troops to return home. Imagine if they elected a leader who promised to bring them home and put an end to this horror. Imagine if that leader changed his mind once he took office. The reality is that our military presence on foreign soil is as offensive to the people that live there as armed Chinese troops would be if they were stationed in Texas. Shutting down military bases and ceasing to deal with other nations with threats and violence is not isolationism. It is the opposite. Opening ourselves up to friendship, honest trade and diplomacy is the foreign policy of peace and prosperity. It is the only foreign policy that will not bankrupt us in the short order, as our current actions most definitely will. I share the disappointment of the American people in the foreign policy rhetoric coming from the administration. The sad thing is, our foreign policy will change eventually, as Rome's did, when all budgetary and monetary tricks to fund it are exhausted.